Hey, what's up? This is Chris from Winsound.com. This video, I'm going to show you how to trigger Apple Loops in Logic Studio using the ESS24. Let's check it out. So the first thing that you need to do is to open up a software instrument track, which I have right here. And then you want to open up the ESS24 inside that track, which is right down here. Open up the edit window inside the ESS24. And now you can go through your loops library to find the loops that you want to use. You can listen to them just by simply clicking on a loop. Okay, and another thing to keep in mind is all the dream loops, these are MIDI tracks. Whereas all the blue loops, those are audio tracks. Okay. So once you find one that you like, simply drag it into the edit window. And now you can drag as many different loops in at the same time as you want. I'm just going to go with this one. And now to import the loop into the session, simply double click on the file under the name column. Now it's imported. Since that's the only loop I'm going to use, I don't need this window anymore, so I'm just going to drag it over to the side. I'm just going to close out of the ESS24. And this, this window is a little too large. I want to more subdue a smaller window. So I'm going to close out that as well. And I'm going to close out of the loops list also because I don't need that anymore either. And now I'm going to open up the sample editor which has the sample in it. And it's much smaller and way more convenient. Okay, so now now I can trigger the sample with my MIDI keyboard, which is really great. And it's going to play the sample for however long I hold down the key. So if I just tap the key, it's just going to play that first bit. But it can also play the whole sample. Now, the higher up the octave scale that I go, it's going to be playing the sample faster and at a higher pitch. Whereas the other way, if I play down the octave scale, it's going to be playing it slower and at a lower pitch. And now you can record straight from here if you want and get some really funky stuff. Whatever you want, whatever you want to do that. It's up to you. Let's delete that. But also another cool feature about the sample is if you if you, you were using a MIDI file for your sample, if that's what you chose, you can highlight a section from from the sample. I'm just gonna go with this snare hit and now go to edit selection to region and now I've turned this into a sample from a sample. So now I'm just going to hit the, the hit a key on my MIDI keyboard. And it's just pulling that one little highlighted selection that I chose. And it's still going up the hot octave scale. Going down. So, as you can tell, there's many different options that you can use and just unlimited possibilities even within a single sample.